constantly rubbing its, 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 its muzzle on objects, then um, especially if it's a dairy cow, um, the first thing you, one of the first things you're going to suspect, in addition to the you know uh, nasal foreign bodies, nasal tumors, would also be allergic or atopic uh, rhinitis. Um, Fortunately, since it is a dairy animal, you would be able to afford things like endoscopy, and right away you would see the um, what well, you would see see uh, these differentials. So that would help you right away to say, okay, I don't see a granular or a tumor or a foreign body, so that shortens my differential list. And it's a dairy animal <coughs> sneezing and has a profuse nasal discharge. It's probably an allergic or atopic. Um, as far as treatment, treatment does get a little complicated because it is a dairy animal, it's in the food supply, it's, it's constantly being milked. Um, so you don't want to keep it on dexamethasone for any length of time. Um, uh, remove allergen or remove animal. So what that's getting at is that unfortunately the animal is usually removed from the, from the uh, milking part, it's usually um, sent, to, sent to slaughter. Fortunately, it's not that common a condition. Uh, congenital cystic nasal turbinates in cattle. Um, the giveaway here is that it's, a, it's developmental, so you'll be presented with a with a newborn uh, cow um, with short convex nasal bones, and that's pretty much the, the giveaway that it's a. Uh, it's going to be uh, cystic nasal turbinates in the cavity. Um, because their nasal passages are very short, very deformed, um, they're, they're really having a lot of difficulty in breathing, so they're very dyspneic when they're presented to you. So a young animal uh, presenting with, with a shortened muzzle, um, difficulty breathing, um, once you do have trauma, the only other uh, likely uh, differential would be congenital uh, system of the um, And fortunately, you know, <coughs> there is actually a surgical treatment to help you um, deal with that. Although since it is a developmental disease, you probably not want to breed that animal. So you probably just raise it to market weight and then take it, uh, take it to market. And you know, it gets kind of depressing when, when you're doing ruminant diseases because it seems like every disease ends with take to slaughter, take to slaughter. Um, it's just the nature of the of the profession. And it's just you know realism that you know sometimes you just have to cut your losses and take the animal to market and try to try to earn what money you can. Alright? All right, so, so continuing down the, the respiratory passages, um, the sinuses, uh, the only condition we talk about in, in the sinuses is sinusitis. And um, it's an infectious disease most of the time, but you know, and it's supposed to be a non-infectious course, but uh, we just mentioned real briefly um, bacterial inflammation of the sinuses, uh, most common in your large rumens, so most common in cattle and less common in your smaller rumens. And you guys remember a little bit of your anatomy? You know where these sinuses are located? Okay, you said yes? All right, so the frontal sinus is where? Yeah, yeah, um, um, you know, between the eyes. Um, maxillary sinuses over, 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 the, over the cheek teeth. Region and the corneal sinuses at the base of the horns. And um, last week I mentioned that as part of the history with a sinusitis, you might hear that the animal was recently dehorned, or you might see that it has an injury to the base of the horn, for example. Um, earlier this summer we had one of the one of the uh, school goats, one of the Cape Iron Research Unit goats, um, presented with, with a broken horn. And it actually became a pretty involved case because basically it's a lot of flushing, a lot of packing with, with um, antibiotic uh, 
soap to go off and time. So it takes it takes a little while for it to for it to heal on its own. So, um, as far as the most common isolates, um, actinomyces, pasteurella, uh, most common isolates. And um, so basically, you know, you, you pretty much know uh, what population of bacteria you're going to be, to be, to be dealing with, with, with the sinusitis, and usually we're going to treat them with something like uh, penicillin or tetracycline. Uh, but the clinical signs that they present with the sinusitis um, typically, they're off feed and febrile, and you also have this nasal discharge and follow breath and odor, um, along with the history of recent dehorning or recent trauma. That's going to be your diagnosis of sinusitis. And as far as your uh, treatment, this is going to be a, a sinusotomy, so you open up the sinuses via tree finding, um, and then uh, just flushing and draining. Um, you're going to have to prepare the owner, though, for a prolonged course of treatment. So they're going to have to be willing, um, uh, compliant owners for you to actually go ahead and start treating this animal with sinusitis. Um, it's basically just, just you know, time and effort and um, a little bit of money as well. Uh, so what you want to do is concentrate more on control, so preventing sinusitis. Um, some things that we recommend um, that you'll see you know, on exams and so on. Um, as far as how to prevent um, the animal developing sinusitis, you try to dehorn at an early age. Um, you know, avoid dehorning during times of year where, where it could get infected. Um, using fly control also helps. And of course, bandaging. Um, if you were here during the summer, you would see go to the back and you had to keep it bandaged to try to keep it from getting um, fly infested and getting uh, reinfected. <coughs> All right. Making good time, class president. You're not going to have to tell me time is up this time. <coughs> Making good time. All right, so consider, continuing down the nasal passages, the sinuses, and now we're in the region of the pharynx. Alright, so pharyngeal trauma and abscesses. So again, um, one of the things that will clue you in is the history of this animal having recently been dosed, um, dosing syringes or balling guns, for example. Um, as you get more experience working with large animals, working with cattle, um, you'll, you'll hopefully use these devices or see them being used. Uh, passing stomach tubes, uh, not that often in, in ruminants. Um, uh, rough feeds, um, difficult to hear, to get from the history that the animal has been exposed to a rough feed. It's probably going to be something you'll find on physical exam. Uh, the last animal we had, uh, last cow we had that had pharyngeal trauma, um, you know, the clinical signs were dyspnea and extended neck and profuse salivation, basically it was reluctant to swallow. And we had it in the shoe, we restrained the head, we opened the mouth, and it had a, had a stick um, <coughs> caught in its pharynx. So, you know, rough feed, you know, it was probably eating or didn't have enough grass to eat, so it was trying to, to eat whatever it could, and it picked up, picked up the stick and it lodged in the trachea, or, or lodged in the pharynx. So, so that can happen. Um, the presentation is basically an animal that's having difficulty breathing and also difficulty swallowing. Um, Depending on how long the, the trauma has been present, uh, it, it may also present with a foul odor or a cough. So the clinical <coughs> sound is a visual examination with a speculum and flashlight will usually give you your diagnosis. Um, rarely will you have to go to the extent of your radi radi radiographs or endoscopy um, or cytology and culture. Um, 
An animal that's presenting with difficulty swallowing, so one first thing you think of as a differential is rabies, so you're going to be fairly cautious as far as handling the animal. You're probably going to wear gloves before you look in the mouth, before you open up the mouth. And another differential, or set of differential with tumors. Um, Actinovascularosis would also be um, a differential, necrotic laryngitis, and so on. And the treatment, um, if the trauma has progressed to the point where, where an abscess is formed, um, you know, fortunately that's pretty rare. Um, I won't have to do it a couple of times in the last 20 years or so. But basically, you treat it just the way you would any other abscess. And the only thing you have to, to be cautious about is holding the head down to make sure that the abscess drains, or the perlite material drains. And then after that, you put the animal on antibodies and anti-inflammatories. All right. All right. Good time management. Good time management. I'm done. All right. So today is what Tuesday. So I'll see you again on Thursday, and we'll probably.